Have you ever wondered where you really stand with God? Are you overcome with feelings of guilt because of things you've done wrong? Are you tired of religion that focuses on rules that you can't keep? Have we got good news for you? It's time to listen in on some casual conversation with Mike Kapler and Joel Brzezinski and discover what true freedom is all about. This is Growing in Grace. We are going to do it for another week, Growing in Grace. Mike Kapler and Joel Brzezinski on yet another podcast. Getting into summertime here now, so uh, we know that uh, sometimes life gets a little busier, more activities going on, but uh, we do appreciate you taking time out. We appreciate you just taking the, the 14 minutes or so that we have together each week to take some time to get encouraged in the gospel and stay you know, established, rooted, and grounded in it, rooted and grounded in understanding who you are in Christ and who he has already made you to be. That's, that's much of what our podcast is about, is understanding your new identity in him, because it's not about what you're trying to do to get to a certain point. It's what God did for us already. And the way we grow in that is to just simply uh, understand that God has created you in Christ, recreated you. Yeah, that's right. You're a new creation in Christ Jesus, and that's not just a small thing to say. (laughs) I mean, I think so many times we glance over that, yeah, I'm a new creation, okay, yeah, but people don't really think of the reality of that. It's true. You used to be The old man in Adam, the person that you were born in, in Adam, you had a sinful nature. And and all of these things, that that was your old identity, you were a sinner. And you needed grace, big time. And then you received that grace. You received Jesus Christ. You believed. And it's as simple as that, Joel. I mean, belief, right? I mean, there are people out there in grace circles that are suggesting that belief is not necessary. Well, there's, it's just an act of the heart. It's not a work. Right. And I think that's where people get hung up on it. Is But belief, if you want to cut out belief when it comes to the gospel by faith, um, there's lots of other cults already established out there. Mm-hmm. Right? You don't have to start a new one. Exactly. Uh, I'm sorry. I just had to get that in. But <laughs> Well, it's good. I mean, it's true. There is a big kind of a, I don't know, I don't, I don't like the word movement so much, but a lot of talk out there about that stuff. And, you know, like you say, it's not a work. It's something that the heart sees and understands a message and simply believes it and, and receives the truth of it. Simply and responding to what he's already done for us. For. Yeah. Exactly, yeah. It's, it's a response. It's not a work. And so, but yeah, uh, with all that said, you know, what happens is you do become a new creation with a, a brand new identity, a brand new nature. And that is what the nature that we live in. That's, that's who we are. Yeah, sure. This uh, thing called the flesh still kind of hangs around and bugs us from time to time. And we don't always do what we want to do. And sometimes we, you know, we, we do things that we don't want to do and we, and we don't do things that we want to do. Paul had something to say about that, but that doesn't mean that we're condemned. It doesn't mean that God has forsaken us or left us or that we've now gone back into that fallen state and we have to get ourselves right with God again. It just means that we've followed after something that we didn't need to follow after, that we shouldn't have followed after, and all we need to do is set our minds straight again and realize that we are this new creation in Christ Jesus and uh, know that God has never left us and never forsaken us and never sure, accuses the, us. Yeah, there you go. I mean, th- that's the truth. And, you know, the, the recreation took place in your inner man, so to speak, the spirit, the real you. Just like God is a spirit, you're a spirit. We're just living in this body that, that is corrupt, and, and we do experience temptation. That doesn't go away. Although I do believe that God has given us a, a power and authority that we probably haven't really understood yet when it comes to dealing with sin and those kinds of things. The good news is, talking about sin in our daily lives, Jesus dealt with the issue of sin. You know, check back on some past podcasts. He dealt with the issue of sin when it came to our, re- our redemption and, and our forgiveness and that sort of thing. But sometimes we, we still have choices to make, and uh, we'll talk some more about that later. But getting back to what you, you were getting into here, Joel, last week we were talking about accusers and where they come from. And we're going to kind of springboard off of that here this week to try and finish our point on what we started last week. And uh, to get started on that, on that, I wanted to look at something in Romans 2, 
And in order to look at that, I wanted to back up to Romans, one of our favorite places to look at here in the in the in the good news gospel scriptures here. Romans, you're, going, you're going back to Romans one, aren't you? Romans one, sixteen yeah. and seventeen. Uh, yeah, uh. <laughs> this is some good stuff. And. A lot of people don't necessarily understand the the fullness of what is being said here, and we just hope to bring some of this out anyway. But Paul says, I am not ashamed of the gospel of Christ, for it is the power of God to salvation for everyone who believes, for the Jew first and also for the Greek. Now, that's important in what he says there, but I'll get into that in just a second. But he says, for in it, in the gospel, the righteousness of God is revealed. From faith to faith, as it is written, the just shall live by faith. Now, put a mental bookmark on that phrase, the righteousness of God, because that is really what it's all about. It's about God's righteousness as opposed to man's righteousness. And then if um, you skip a whole bunch and get to Roman, Romans 3.21, Paul gets back to it. But now the righteousness of God, apart from the law, is revealed. But he says a whole bunch of stuff in between that, to make a case for why the righteousness of God was needed, because it couldn't be about man's righteousness. In in the second half of Romans 1, Paul talks about all these things, the ungodliness and the unrighteousness of men who suppress the truth in unrighteousness. He lists all kinds of sins, all kinds of ungodly behavior, And unfortunately, the church takes a look at this, and they think, you know what? I need to point my finger at these people who are doing all these bad things, sexual immorality, wickedness, covetousness, maliciousness, murder, strife, deceit, all these things that Paul lists. But if you look at the end of what Paul says in Romans 1, and then get into Romans 2, this is what he's getting at. Paul is talking to the Jews who have the law, and they think that they're all righteous They're the ones that have the law. They're the holy ones. They're the ones that are so awesome in their own righteousness. But Paul says, therefore, you are inexcusable, O men, whoever you are who judge, for in whatever you judge another, you condemn yourself. For you who judge practice the same things. So Paul was saying, hey, guess what? You people who are pointing your finger accusing other people, condemning other people, making other people feel bad for their sins— You are just as bad as them because you do the same things. Now, you might not do exactly the same things that somebody else does, but in that list of things that Paul writes out and in the the law of Moses, you can find things that you fall short in. In other words, Paul says you have no right to judge anybody else because apart from Christ, apart from the righteousness of God, you're just as equally a sinner. Yeah, you, you fall under that accusation again, that the law brought that. He went on from where you were at in Romans 2 and spent almost another chapter continuing this thought process, so it's hard to divide this up into a very many verses. But when you get to Romans 3.20, remember what Joel just read back in Romans 1.16 and 17, that the righteousness of God, this is what the gospel is, by the way. If anybody ever, ever asks you, what is the gospel? It's God's righteousness revealed. It was revealed in Christ and then in us. It was part of the mystery that had been hidden for ages, and now the righteousness of God has been revealed. And that's really what everybody wants to know is that they're right with God, okay? So Paul makes this case, as Joel was talking about, regarding the law and um, mentioned some things about Gentiles and stuff, too, who were not under the law. But then we get to Romans 3.20, and he says, Therefore, by the deeds of the law, no flesh shall be justified in his sight. For by the law is the knowledge of sin. So, going back to Romans 1, 16 and 17, Paul makes a case, and then he's coming back to what he started with in Romans 1. Mm -hmm. But it took him almost two or three chapters to get to this point where he says, but now the righteousness of God apart from the law is revealed being witnessed by the law and the prophets. Remember that phrase from some past podcasts Mm -hmm. going back to the Sermon on the Mount. Uh, Even the righteousness of God through faith in Jesus Christ to all and on all who believe, for there is no difference. And so this is exciting stuff. As Paul goes on from here, Joel, he gets to a, a verse, several chapters, which you quoted last week. There is therefore now in Christ no condemnation. We're free from guilt now. That's not the way it was under the law of Moses, which the Jews were under. And, and of course, when religious people are living under that law, 
whether it's today or several thousand years ago, when you're trying to adhere to the law of Moses, the commandments, and trying to live a life that's based on right and wrongdoing, then you're eating from the wrong tree. You're not eating from the tree of life. You're eating from the tree of works. And whenever that happens, what's going to spill over is accusing other people of not living up to a certain standard that you think they should be living up to. And by the way, a lot of times the reason that happens, I think, is because people realize they aren't living up to it themselves and it's easier to elevate yourself by dropping other people down. <laughs> I think that's true. You know, you know the, the type of people, the person who isn't established in the, the type of things that we were just talking about, how the gospel is God's righteousness revealed, but the people who, have, who are living in a so-called gospel of their own righteousness, their own self-righteousness, or their own attempts at trying to establish their own righteousness through what they do, those are the types of people who are going to go around accusing and pointing fingers because they are under the assumption they're living with, you know, off of the foundation that life is about some standard that we have to keep. And so if a person isn't living up to that standard, and like you say, people are so quick to point out other people's you know, substandard living, even when they know themselves aren't, aren't living up to it, but they're so quick to point out the sins of other people. And the reason for that is because, again, they're living with the foundation that life is about our own righteousness, our own attempts at establishing righteousness before God so that we can stay right with God through what we do. But that's not the gospel. The gospel is God's righteousness revealed that's been given to us as a gift, something that we can't establish by ourselves. And so if a person can just get that in their mindset, that it's not about me or anybody else trying to live up to a certain standard, then the judging and the condemnation can end, and we can lift each other up and point one another back to the free gift of the righteousness of God. I, I couldn't have said that better myself. I mean, that, that's just the way it is. And so if you're listening right now and you're down because you just have crawled into a hole that's filled with guilt and condemnation, we're here to extend a hand to you and let you know you need to come out of that hole because there's nobody left to accuse you. Just like the woman we talked about last week caught in the act of adultery. Where are your accusers? Well, there aren't any. Well, God isn't accusing you either. He's extending the hand of grace and love and encouragement. And that's where you need to go. As a believer in Christ, I don't care what it is you've done wrong. We've all done it. And that's not the issue anymore. The good news is that isn't really you. Okay, you may have given in to the wrong thing and made some wrong choices, but that's not you. You are a brand new creation in Christ and you've inherited many of the attributes that God himself has and they've been poured and deposited into you through Christ himself. And so unconditional love, accept it receive it, and move on. Oh, that's so right, Cap. Move on in God's unconditional love. Well, speaking of moving on, how about this? The Bible can be a very dangerous book. The Bible can be one of the most dangerous books you'll ever read if you... Oh, man, we're out of time. What a cliffhanger. We'll pick up on that next week on Grow It in Grace at growingingrace.org. This has been Growing in Grace with Mike Kapler and Joel Brzezinski. Heard online through various internet sources around the world each week. To access hundreds of past programs, visit graceroots.org. Share it with a friend and listen again next week for more Growing in Grace.